for day I am tasked to discuss the topic uh, just a brief background. So what are arthropods? So arthropods are actually the most diverse group of organisms. Uh, they comprise around 75% of all known animal species and around 50% of all living organisms. So they are mainly characterized by their jointed appendages, as you can see in the, in the photo and the slide. So they have these jointed legs, antenna, uh, palps in the mouth. So mainly that's their characteristic. Uh, in caves, uh, arthropods are actually present in most terrestrial caves. Even, the, even in some caves na mukhang patay na or barren, you will, will be able still to see at least a few individuals or few representatives of arthropods. Uh, they are present in all cave zones. As, so as discussed by Sir Dr. Lee a while ago, these are the entrance of Twilight in the Dark. Uh, and they are also present in all sub-communities within the cave. They are present, they can be found in the floor community, the wall, and the ceiling. And cave arthropods, like other the other uh, cave fauna, can be classified into into groups. Uh, Dr. Liet mentioned a while ago the, the trogloxins, which are the cave uh, visitors. Uh, and most and some arthropods uh, within the trogloxins are specialized as vertebrate ectoparasites. Uh, meanwhile, we also have the troglophiles and Another sub-classification within uh, cave arthropods are your guanobites. These are uh, specialized arthropods that live primarily on the droppings or the guano of your bats in your fish bed. And lastly, we have the troglobites. These are your true cave dwellers. So in the succeeding slides, you will see images of cave arthropods and their respective categories. Uh, noted by the circles, colored circles uh, beside their name. So cave arthropods in the Philippines, okay, the research or the study first appeared around 1892 in a paper by Bolivar, Rafe, and Simon, uh, where they surveyed uh, several caves in Bulacan, Rizal, and Camarines Sur. Uh, in this paper, they described uh, and reported uh, two species of beetles, two cockroaches, nine species of spiders, and two whip spiders, as well as one harvest man. So after that, nothing follows. No succeeding reports or studies were ever published regarding cave arthropods in the Philippines. Until recently, uh, there is an increasing attention in the study of cave arthropods, especially with the efforts of the University of the Philippines Museum of Natural History, as well as the Institute of Biological Sciences, who started the UPLB Cave and Karst Biodiversity Research Program, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Liz a while ago, and as well as Dr. Albiola, Sir Albiola. Uh, yeah, so uh, through the program, we were able to survey several caves in the country, and astonishingly, we noted an underestimated diversity of cave arthropods. So in the succeeding slides, we'll be showing some uh, images or, uh, of the arthropods that we, we were able to record and discover during these surveys. These are just some representatives. And there are actually a lot more. So first of these arthropods would be your mites, which belong to the group Acari which are abundant on the floor community as either detritivores or parasites or predators. Uh, and they're also present in the ceiling community as ectoparasites of the bats or the birds that, that live there. So recently there are at least two report uh, described species, uh, which is the Lanchicela filipina from the Diaknabato cave and uh, Conaxa mini discondyla. So on the photo on the left is an illustration of Lanchicela filipina. 
well, on the right, we have some uh, two examples of mites that, uh, that are parasitic in a whip spider. Next group would be your spiders, which are actually very abundant in inside caves. You know? They are abundant in the floor and the wall community and are uh, the, sometimes the main predator in these communities. Now, uh, there are two recently described species, including the uh, Orphanacus cueva bordeus from Polillo Island and Masteria orduhe from Bani Pangasina. So just some more images of uh, spiders that are that we were able to document inside game. Yeah. So here is your uh, common huntsman spider. I think we are familiar with some representatives of this group inside, which are common in in our houses. And these are actually the the troglophilic spiders, which you will see are in in the floor communities of schools. Uh, aside from spiders, there are also other arachnids that we noted, which includes your uh, whip spiders, uh, the uh, opilionis or the harvestman, and some pretty weird centipedes and millipedes that, that we observe. Yeah. And we also have your whip scorpion and micro whip scorpion. So from the arachnids, there are also other uh, hexapods, which are your six-legged uh, arthropods. So first group is the entognata, which are your, uh, these are minute arthropods that are common in the soil and eventually found their way inside uh, caves. Uh, since they are very small, they are easily transported in the caves by a wind or the movement and transport of materials like water or decaying plant matter. So in caves, they are usually represented by two groups, uh, which includes your springtails, the one in, in, in the slide, and uh, the plurans, or these are minute predatory insects, a heart and talking. So these are just some representatives. Yeah. Uh, then after entognates would come your insects. No? So insects are among the most diverse group of arthropods that you'd find in inside caves. And they're usually very staple. So you, uh, you'd be easily, you can find them easily inside caves. Yeah. And they are, they inhabit different portions of the cave. Uh, currently, we reported around 12 insect orders, uh, including the vertebrate ectoparasites. So let's run down to them. So, of course, my favorite group and the one that I'm currently studying are the cockroaches. These are primarily the critivores, so they usually are present in the guano. And they're often found on the floor and wall communities. And we actually discovered several troglobitic species, like that has been mentioned a while ago, uh, which includes the Nocticola gonzalezi, as well as a newly recorded species, Pycnocelus uh, triatus, which we found in caves in Polillo Island. So some more images. So uh, aside from the common uh, the, the usual cave dwelling uh, species. We also found an invasive species, uh, which is Periplaneta americana, uh, which uh, we documented in a cave in Samal Island. So this is actually very intriguing because apparently these, these species have already uh, invaded the, the, the cave system. So it would be interesting to know the changes within the community and, and the structure of the cave. So after the cockroaches, we'll have uh, the orthopterans, which would include your crickets. Uh, these are common in the floor and wall communities, even in partially disturbed caves. Yeah. So mostly, uh, they are mostly troglophilic species and are present uh, in two groups. Uh, they are represented by two families inside caves. 
The first would be your del uh, your camel cricket, uh, which is the one shown here from the family Raphidophoridae. Next would be your delicate cricket, belong which belongs to the family Phalangopsidae. Yeah. Of course, there are a lot of undescribed species within this group. Uh, so far, within camel crickets, there's only at least two reported species in the Philippines, and um, most of what you will find inside the caves are probably undescribed. Next would be your bugs, your hemipteran. Uh, a large group of these are progloxinic. So they're just uh, brought inside the caves or they merely visit these caves for shelter. Uh, and, but there are a lot, some progloxinic species that we, we found. Uh, there are some species that feed on penetrating roots as well as biofilms, yeah, including these undescribed cichlid that we found in Cavinti. Uh, some are also burrowing on guano. Uh, there are predatory uh, hemipterans, so those that feed on spiders, yeah. as well as a few aquatic species, especially in, in caves that, are, that have flowing water. And like other orders, there are several undescribed species. So another group would be your flies, the dipterans, uh, but majority of these are present as vertebrate ectoparasites, such as those from the family Strebidae and Ecteridae, and as well as hippobosids on Swiftlet. But, uh, an, but an interesting group to, to study would be those uh, larvae that live on the ceiling and the walls of the caves, so, such as this one in, in the photo. So they produce curtains of sticky seal traps, which attract insect prey. But other lar other larvae live on stagnant pools of water or in wet guano. Uh, and similarly, there are several undescribed species. So these are just images of the vertebrate ectoparasites. Next would be your guano moths. Uh, so belonging to the order Lepidoptera. So they live within the flora community and they create casing baits on guano and silk. Uh, yeah, they are abundant in guano communities. And like most or like all insects in cave, there are a lot of undescribed species. So other than those, we also have several orders of insects that we, we discovered. Yeah. So which includes your neuropterans, uh, some earwigs, beetles and jumping uh, bristle tails. We also have uh, several species of wasps and ants that, that we found in caves, but these are likely progloxins. So aside from the arthropods that we, we reported, we also noted several possible threats on the diversity of these, these organisms. Of course, we we noted that a lot of these species are, are, although they look similar, are actually different. So these we call sibling species. No? And each particular cave actually houses a particular species of, of organism that if you compare it with uh, another cave outside the, the same cave system, you will notice that there are actually distinct groups of, organ of arthropods. So some, uh, many are actually narrowly distributed, especially for the cave dwelling, dwellers, group cave dwellers, which can actually be an effect of food availability. So in, in some of our observations, we observed that uh, if there's an abundant source of guano, you will observe a very low species diversity, but a very high population size. Of course, this is because there's a lot of resources for this organism. But for areas with limited food sources, you can actually see, in a way, a higher diversity of arthropods. And majority of these arthropods are actually more specialized, tending to be more troglomorphic or trog troglobitic. Uh, of course, we also observe threats, as I mentioned a while ago, which uh, includes, of course, your habitat destruction, 
bat hunting, and controlled tourism. Uh, one of the caves that that the earlier reports of cave arthropods were based upon is actually a large ecotourism area right now. So I think that we are sad to say that it is possible that the original uh, that the, one of the first cave arthropods reported in the Philippines may actually be extinct. So it's it's another area that we need to look into. So and uh, one collection, uh, soil compaction and uh, invasive species. So well, what does this all tell us? You know? Of course, arthropods, as mentioned, as women may have implied, are an integral part of maintaining the balance in cave and subterranean habitat. So, and, and because of this, there's a need to continue surveys of cave arthropods in the country, which is actually part of, of or an objective of this project, of this program. You know? And we need to increase the weight or the consideration of arthropods when creating cave management plans. So this is something that we can uh, give to, to our implementing agency. So uh, I think that's the end of my talk. And I would like to thank the following uh, institutions and persons which allowed us or helped us to this project. Thank you very much.